Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'll be doing an unboxing of Point Blank. V is for Victory. This is from Lock and Load Publishing. It's good to have Lock and Load back on the channel again. Uh, this is a card-based World War II game, solo or two-player. So as we see on the back here, its uh, complexity level is about a 6 out of 10, and solitaire playability is bury the needle all the way off the chart. Uh, it's a lot of cards. It does have a, it does have a map. Um, but let's see what goes on inside the game. It's designed by uh, Sean Drulinger. The art's by Shane Logan. And, of course, producer David Heath. Um, very excited about it. Um, it's supposed to be possibly an upfront challenger, believe it or not. And let's see what this brings to the table. But more importantly, we're going to see what comes in the box. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Oh, Don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, yeah and click the bell. One ringy dingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I did notice, it's not only it's a it's a very heavy box with the contents inside it, it's thick, but also you'll see the lid itself is actually built for durability. That's a very thick, very thick uh, cardboard lid that that's made out of. So it's pretty solid. So let us dig through the contents here. Excited to play this one actually. So, all right, so start out with the point blank V is for victory module rules and scenarios version 1.0. This is a, I believe this is called perfect bound. It's at flat edge, but it is, uh, it does look like it's scored to lay mostly flat. It is full color. Um, Oh, let's see, we got a page count here. Oh gosh, it's 84, about 80, 88 pages. It's pretty big. It is full color. It's a matte, you know, semi-gloss stock. Um, shows you the, it shows you the battlefield setup, the cards you're gonna use. Um, wow, how many scenarios are in this? It's pretty ridiculous, in a good way. Um, all right, so here is some rules at the beginning. We have a uh, introductory narrative here, Wo zum Tufel. Um, and then it looks like we've got, well, they don't number them. So we've got uh, nation-specific rules. We've got U.S., German, British, Canadian, French resistance forces in here. Uh, scenario terrain instructions, design your own scenario. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two scenarios. There's a section on campaign rules, the orders of battle for the U.S. infantry, U.S. armor, German infantry, German armor, and then uh, three scenarios apparently for the campaign. So it is large print. Um, one thing Lock and Load has done a lot of lately is having this kind of larger, uh, I don't know, almost a 14 or 16 point font, pretty large, large print. Uh, we have introduction, uh, nation specific rules. The American forces have plentiful ammunition. The German forces are fanatics, just to name a few. So, uh, scenario terrain instructions for Brush, clear, hill, marsh, road, stone buildings. Um, the default deck of 70 terrain cards. So you build a deck of terrain cards uh, are included in the table below. So this tells you how many you get and how many are included in the deck by default. So we'll look at, we'll just pick one of the missions here at random. Let's see. All right, so mayhem. July 7th, 1944, the 125th Squadron, attached to 128th Infantry, Infantry Regiment, 30th Infantry Division, while attempting to launch an attack from a gusherie, encountered heavy resistance and was forced back into the town. Some high-strung remnants from the 38th SS Panzer Grenadier Regiment seemed determined to kick them out of the town. U.S. sets up first in any sector within the U.S. player side. Um, gonna get an M4A1, a M5, three-inch anti-tank gun, four infantry, Corporal Day, Captain Bodine. German set up second in Sector 2. Um, 
Never turns first impulse. Three turns, German has first impulse. Germans must capture and control the town square, objective, and both stone buildings by the end of turn three. For solo play, the U.S. is defensive, the German is offensive. And there's special scenario rules for Mayhem. Here are the terrain cards from Mayhem. Remove from the default deck, two streams, two marsh, so on and so forth. So you'll build the, the standard deck, and then you'll uh, take them out of here. And then here's your battlefield setup. And then we go next to here, Kitty Kitty. So that's pretty cool. A lot of, a lot of content there. So now we've got the core rules, which is another thick book, probably about the same size. Yeah, a little bit, actually a little bit bigger. It's 90, 96 pages. And this is the actual rules for the game. Again, full color, lots of, uh, lots of detail. Um, Again, it's large print, so I don't let the number of pages fool you, but it does look like the uh, the rules do go pretty much the entire, uh, covers the entire book. Um, the solo rules pick up on page 87, so before that is just the game rules and the solo rules pick up. So let's take a look at that, the solo system overview. Well, we'll look at the whole thing here just briefly. Now, this is a little more dense. Uh, there are some... Some color pictures, and then some full color pictures here. But again, larger print, so it should read pretty quick. Let's see, solo, there's a little setup. Solo system overview. To play the solo system, use the AEO action selection table found in the manual and on the player aids. Additionally, you will need to locate the solo flowcharts. When playing a battle with the AEO, the player will first roll 2d6 for an action on the AEO sequence selection. I believe that's artificial enemy imp opponent is AEO. It says right here. The solo flow charts are organized by action type and posture. Posture determines the AEO will play the scenario defensively, offensively. It sounds like they've adapted the solo system for lock and load tactical, which we've got some videos on if you want to watch that. We'll know more when we get in there, but it's reading that it sounds like they've adapted it for this particular game which is kind of cool all right and now we have large uh, map sheets these are just a grid and it's two parts so you see you're seeing the beautiful blank side and we'll flip it over here so this is point blank this is the bottom half of the map so these are your very, these are the different sectors, and the card would go in there to say what the kind of terrain actually was in there. It's a very thick, uh, like a coated paper. Almost, almost, almost feels like plastic. It's not obviously, but it does. It's it's got some nice quality to it. Um, if anything, I'd have to say I'm a little disappointed. It's not a mounted board, given that it's a, a standard size. Um, mounted boards always work better than than paper maps, um, in my opinion. Uh, it's just easier to work with because they lay flat, they don't tear, and you don't need uh, plexiglass to deal with. Here's another map. Nice subtle kind of watercolory artwork on there very nice it seems like it's very durable though that it's, it's not like your traditional paper maps and it's definitely not like uh, the annoying folded cardstock maps that you know never lay flat so all right so now we've got some cardboard counter sheets and they're in a nice plastic bag So it's not just the cardboard. So there's very little cardboard, actually. So we have one sheet here, two sheets of markers. And these are the nice uh, lock and load style, uh, pre-rounded, large, thick, very durable counters. Nice subtle artwork, too. I do like that. These are fatigue that we're looking at now. We've got, oops, I'm unpunching as I put back in. So we got fatigue counters, covered arc for fire, 
uh, bogged down for some tracked vehicles moving, uh, in sector move, I assume that they're moving within one of the little squares that they're in. Flank A, flank B, flank C. And then here we've got area A, B, C, and D. Different sector markers, sector zero, sector one, sector three. I assume it's two on the back. Yeah, even numbers on the back. Got a turn tracker, one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. Weapon broken status. Uh, shaken status, acquiring cover, hero, so these are all hero markers, and then there's icons on them. So there's not a lot of text on these, which is nice. So two sheets of counters. And there's a very nice, very, very nice coded cardstock player aids. So this one is the solo flowchart. where you start, I guess here, unit spend or discard action. And then you do a bunch of yes, no's to find out what they do. This is very similar, like I said, to the, uh, to the uh, AI for lock and load tactical. Uh, offensive, defensive posture, unit spend or discard action. And then solo player aid 4B. So this is, this is flow, solo flow chart 4A, which just implies there's gonna be one through three in there as well. Um, and this is the 2d6 result and the defensive posture action, defender notes, attack posture action, action notes. So there's one. And then I do like the artwork. So this credits us to Shane Logan. And I like the nice, again, the subtle watercolory kind of feel. And then the straight up, you know, information is, is bold and where you need to see, but it's got that nice backing. So this is solo flow chart 1A, defensive posture, offensive posture for recon. And then the AEO upkeep phase flow chart. I like that they didn't make these too big. These are, these are your standard eight and a half by 11 sheets. So they didn't make them really wide like I think they had done with some of the other games. So it makes it a little easier to manage and use. Now we've got point blank player aid 4A. This is straight up player aid. This is for melee, overrun, and miscellaneous tables. 4B is heroes and abilities. So these these are these icons that we saw were all different abilities that can be assigned to heroes. And then we've got point blank point blank player aid 5A, game icons and cards. And then Leader, Shaken, and Fatigue, 5B. Charts for the different rules, Leader Summary, Shaken, and Rally. Fatigue, Spent. All right, now we're back to Solo Flow Chart. This is 3A, the Offensive Posture, Moving. They're moving and they're offensive, they use this one. I assume Defensive is on the other side. Nope. This is four, this is 3B, offensive and defensive posture fire. So this is the fire action, no matter if they're offensive or defensive. And what we've got here, we've got player aid 1A and 1B. This is 1B, terrain and objectives, gives the different information, does give a rule section that you can refer to. And then the phases of the game, 1A, phases of the game. And now we're back to solo, flowchart 2B, which is the offensive and defensive posture actions. Melee, cover, ready. And then 2A is move for the defensive posture, flowchart. This is player aid 3A, the combat chart. Combat charts, obviously, and 3 B is miscellaneous tables, support weapons, flamethrowers, radios, white phosphorus, smoke, sniper check, sniper cards, flanking, unloading, and loading. And finally, player aid to B, or not to B, that is the question. This is the firing chart for the firing procedure. 
ordnance, infantry attack, firepower, attack resolution, modifiers versus infantry, modifiers versus armored fighting vehicles, fire base damage checks, and then 2A is for bog stacking and buttoning. So those are the charts. So we have, let's see, let's sort them here real quick. We have play raid 2A. This is solo, this is a play raid, this is a solo, this is a play raid, this is a play raid, this is a solo, and this is a solo. So we have four, five, one, two, three. So there's five play raids and four solo charts. We got one, two, yeah, three, and four. Very durable. Nice, nice quality. All right, so now we've got our cards. We have um, some small cards, some mini size cards. We have another deck of cards here. I'm not sure what these are for. How they how they distinguish? We'll have to find these out in a minute. So these have a tree on the back. These have a lightning bolt. And these have flags. And then we also have two dice. I like the, uh, we have a green and green. And they don't roll, so there we go. Now they work, Oop. They rolled really good. Three to one, Germany ones. Uh, they're nice rounded. They're about 15 millimeter, maybe 16. But they're nice and rounded corners, so they roll really well. Very nice, tie game. Uh, and it also has a has a, a tray for sorting the cards into, and I have to say that this is one of the more sturdier feeling included trays that I've seen in any game. Usually these things are just chucked immediately, and this one I actually think is going to be functional. I mean, this you know it's still plastic, but it's it's pretty rigid. I mean, it's, it, they did a good job with this production. The box, the bottom box is thick, walls. And uh, they did a very good job with this. So, all right, let's. Okay, so we know what we're talking about. Let's, I don't normally do this, but what I want to do is take a look in the rule book and see what these cards are, so I can tell you correctly what these are. So, there's a card breakdown. All right, looks like small cards are leaders, so we'll open the leader card first. See if they're wearing their leader hosen. So, we've got some extra cards here too. No, 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 we got some, we got leaders of all stripes here, so we just got some other, we got some blaze and smoke cards as well. These are pretty good, pretty good thickness. They're not too bad, they're not really flimsy. So these are going to go into your into your sectors if there's a fire or there's smoke. Uh, the smoke values are all ones, so it seems like there's not a you know a two to one to zero kind of some more stuck together here. There we go. So they're all one level, and then we have blaze. All right, and then we have leader cards. We've got leaders for the Germans. Apparently some weaponry too. Let's take a look at the German cards. And then we'll go from there, because obviously we've got some gear. Um, yeah, support weapons and leaders are here, are the smaller cards, so. All right, so we've got Lieutenant Andersch, Lieutenant Kohns, an armor leader. Lieutenant Grimm, Oshman, several leaders. And they don't have different bags, which is interesting. So we got and now so you got a stack of leaders. And then we've got some gear. We've got flamethrowers, radios, satchel charges, MG 34s, Panzerfaust 30s, rocket bazookas. Poopchins. So, yeah, each side has their own gear. So, 
So we got various leader cards. This is the, uh, just real quick, this is the morale, this is the modifier, uh, this is the component number, obviously this is the nationality, and then these are different leader actions that they have available to them, which correspond to the uh, icons that we saw earlier on those charts. So that is what you get in those. So that small deck is leaders, support weapons, and some smoke blaze cards. Now, I'm going to move these. I'm going to put these back in their little bin. So we can keep them out of the way. And then let's try to sort some of these here. We have... Now these are... These have got the game back. This is the standard back, which is on the back of all those cards. And those are... And those are got a lot of cards in this game. All right, so we got these. So some of these are going to be terrain, and some of these are going to be unit cards. So let's open one of these and see what you got. So I just picked the deck at random. Picked the one with the tree. We'll see what these cards look like. So they have symbols, and they have a die on them too. To okay, these are terrain. We have any information here on the okay these are unit action cards these are unit action cards and these have the lightning bolt on them well i picked one with tree tree must be terrain they, they show you everything uh but then they don't show you the backs <laughs> so it's kind of like trying to figure out what's what here um so these are unit action cards you see they have the different icons, dice numbers, and then just straight up lightning bolts. Okay. And then these are clearly terrain cards. You know, Bocage, Bocage, Brush. Gosh, this artwork is really nice. Very, very understated. Clear. So on a terrain card, uh, it just tells you uh, the type, uh, if it blocks line of sight, that's we saw that on the flame and smoke cards, uh, any special notes, and defense modifier. So Bakaj gives a three uh, defense modifier, for example, whereas a brush gives you a one. And I'm sure clear gives you zero. Hills. Units have line of sight into any sector on the battlefield. If you're on a hill. With a blocks line of sight going through it. Marsh. Units may not refuse. Whatever refuse order means. Roads are zero. Okay. So these are... This is a terrain deck. So we're sorting through this together. Then we got this. I'm going to guess now, based on the rule book that these are objectives and there's obviously some terrain in there all right so there's some more terrain so let's sift through those well it's not just terrain all right wood buildings three block line of sight yeah. All right. So terrain is the ones with the tree. So that makes sense. So all these are terrain cards and objectives are the ones with the flags on the back, both factions. Crossroads. So this is a defense modifier and objective control flag. It's a black and a black and a white. Two whites for the hotel, two whites and a black. We'll play into it. Manor house. All right, water tower. So these are your objectives. Bunkers, truss bridge. Again, really liking Shane's artwork on this. Good job, Shane. And then we've got these unit action cards and that's what this is, the lightning bolt. So lightning bolt means action tree means terrain and um, 
flags mean objective. So there's your translation, which you probably figured out long before I did. So then we have more of these. And they have a die. And then just various, you know, the icon iconography. Again, very nice. A lot of cards in this. Sniper. Very interested to see how this plays. Okay, so those are our uh, action cards, our objective cards, and the terrain cards all sorted and sifted together. And now we've got this, the deck of uh, unit cards. Is that the best way to say? Squads, weapon teams, and armored fighting vehicles. These are going to be So whereas the the terrain and objective cards build your map, these are what you're going to, you're going to play. So we start out with an M36. We've got our nationality here. Um, any special characteristics, gyro, fast, open top, actions that are available. Um, their, uh, their stats here, let's see, blue is uh, morale. This is their high explosive ordnance. Red is their machine gun firepower. So they're consistent across the various cards. These are all M36s, M21s, are spread out differently. Which is kind of interesting how they've done that. But the iconography or the colors are the same. All right, so these are American. Then we got some British squads. Half squad, parachutes. These are obviously British. Infantry half squads. Cromwell tanks. Fireflies. Tetrarchs, and then we jump into Canadian units. Canadian infantry, Vickers, machine guns, and we'll open one more, see if we can find some German stuff. All right, so we have a few German cards here, second line squads, second line half squad, SS squad, SS squad, half squads. So we got German Luftwaffe squads. 234 ones, Jag Panther, Hetzers. And then on to some more American cards. I'm not gonna open all the cards because you're seeing what they look like. But again, they are pretty good quality, very thick. I would definitely sleeve them. You're gonna shuffle them quite a bit and use them a lot. You would definitely want to get these sleeved. They're standard poker size cards. And the mini cards seem to be mini American. But you can find out more about that on the Lock and Load website to get an, an accurate count and everything. So. Anyway, a lot, a lot, a lot in this box. Goodness gracious. So, um, I'm going to try to put this all back in the box. If you pick up a copy, and I think you should, of Point Blank V is for Victory from Lock and Load, you're going to get a stack of mini cards, mini decks of um, standard poker deck size cards for terrain, for objectives, for units, for um, unit actions, so on and so forth. I'm not going to try to put these back in right now because <laughs> they're all loose. Um, so you're getting all these cards, a massive 90-page uh, rule book, 96-page rule book, I think I said. Yeah, 96-page series rule. Four solo AI charts. Five player aid charts, 
two sheets of nice large size pre-rounded counters, two half map sheets that go together to create your map board, and your module rules and scenarios. It's about 88 pages. And a very nice, sturdy, very, very sturdy box to hold it all in. And that is everything in Point Blank. V is for victory by Lock and Load Publishing. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!